Hello and welcome. This is a Great British Bird podcast and today we're going to be tackling the subject of human trafficking. We have a very special guest, Madison, who herself was trafficked. She's a mum, she's a patriot and she's now devoting her life to fighting it. So uh, hi Madison and thank you so much for agreeing to talk to us. Hi. Hi. And we also have the Great British Bird herself, Claire Hocking. Hi, Claire. How are you doing? Hi. How are you doing? Okay. Um, I'm good. I'm good. So um, we're going to get into it. Um, just a slight warning. This is going to be a hard watch. It's going to be very harrowing, but it's a, a topic that needs to be addressed because the mainstream media will not go anywhere near it. We're alternative media, so we will. So, uh, Madison, you were involved in a major political scandal with two very prominent U.S. officials or politicians, and they don't get much bigger than these guys. Could you um, explain who they are and what happened, please? Sure. So I, as you said, I was trafficked. I'm a survivor of it. Um, everyone keeps saying to stop saying survivor, say I'm a warrior, whatever. <laughs> like, so I was trafficked through the adult film industry, the porn industry here. Um, and I was owned by a man named Derek Hayes of LA Direct Models. He trafficked me through the elite of Hollywood and global politicians, including George Soros and jo uh, Joe Biden. So those are two of the big ones. I've spoken out against other actors, but we're talking about the politicians here. So we'll just focus on, on those two at this point in time. So anyway, so you were involved in a tribunal. Mm -hmm. And could you talk a little bit about that? Because apparently that was in the White House, was it not? Um, I can't say the location of where I was because um, I'm under a gag order, but there, yes, I did get subpoenaed to go testify in these tribunals. I testified over a hundred times against the elite and globalists. Some I can, I've spoken out against some, again, I can't speak of because I'm under a gag order and there still are arrests that are being, are happening at this point in time. So yes, what, what do you want to know? <laughs> okay, just tell me a little bit about the tribunal. Um, well, what you can, what it involved in you know, who, who was there and what you, what your role was exactly. Sure. So I actually got, um, so I'm suing my traffickers. I had filed um, lawsuits against my traffickers. So I have an attorney. My attorney had called me and said, um, you got a subpoena, but we need to meet. So I didn't know what that meant. So like, okay. So I went and met with her and she's like, "There, this is not your normal subpoena. It's a military subpoena. I'm like, what? I don't understand. She's like, well, this is a military, you have to go testify in a military court. And I said, I don't understand. I'm not military. Why would I have to do that? I was very confused, right? Of why I'm going to go testify. She said, well, because your evidence and things have gone into court, you need to go testify in their criminal case and they're under they've been arrested by the military or they're under trial in the military. So I go, okay, I will go. And at first I didn't want to, because again, I'm putting myself at risk by going and saying this stuff happened to me, putting myself at extreme risk. So I said, fine, I'm going to go. I went a couple times. I mean, I was going back and forth to DC multiple times. I'm like, listen, I just need to go where I do bust out all the tribunals at once because this is exhausting and you know I do have a life and job and kids and like let's go so I went out testified over a hundred times against multiple people one of which who was Joe Biden he was the very last person that I testified against you know it's hard to make like let me just say this before I kind of get into all of it is going and making that choice is wasn't a choice about me I've forgiven my traffickers. I've forgiven what has happened to me, but this to me was, it's I either serve my country and love my country so much that I'm gonna go sit on a stand and put myself at risk. So my children and my children's children can have a better future. And so to me, it was a calling that I had to go do as hard as it was. So um, when we did the tribunals and um, Claire and I had talked about this a couple of times, Joe Biden was there, well, uh, Joe Biden, right, was there. Mm -hmm. And I, he was the last one and I don't get emotional a lot. I'm, I'm not an emotional person. I obviously got emotional um, at the borders and whatever yesterday or a few days ago with Claire, but um, Joe, they, I, they kept saying identify who he is, but how do you identify someone in a courtroom when it's not, you know that that's not him. Like you seem like you're going crazy even though you're not crazy. So you're like, okay. 
I can't point at him. I can't say that that's him because then I'm creating a treasonous act against the country because I can't identify. So I said to my attorney, I'm not going to identify him, but how, like he is guilty. So what they did is because I do have evidence of all my rapes and torture. And when I speak out, I don't speak out against anyone that I don't have actual physical evidence against. I don't have any evidence on me whatsoever. All that evidence is, um, across the world and across to to different people. Um, But in the court, I said in the videos, this is who that is because I wasn't gonna identify a man sitting there that looked like him, but wasn't him. Then you feel like you're kind of like going a little bit cuckoo, right? (laughs) You wanna ask me? Let's just ask you about that because the Biden that we see, Mm -hmm. we all suspect is wearing a mask and it's an actor but the biden that we see we're seeing on television or on our phones or whatever so you can have all sorts of cgi and you can have you know special effects but you sat there and looked at that man in the eye what did that person look like did it look like they were wearing a mask how false or fake or how real did it look you know it was it looked very real but he was also like, you know, I am, there are protection orders for any um, witnesses, right? So I, I wasn't too close to him. He was in the room. He looked like what we're seeing on the TV, right? He looked like that. I know it was a person because they walked him in. So, but he looked like what we're seeing. But if you look at like Joe Biden, you know, even 10 years ago, he, it's a completely different person. The, the, even when you get completely. older- yeah, right. Like even when you get older, your face still looks like your face. This Joe yeah. Biden doesn't look like and your eyes. Your eyes will always, your eyes will always look like your eyes, and his eyes are nothing like his eyes. Nothing. Exactly, exactly. And he's like the one that we, the Joe Biden before, I believe, and I might get this mixed up, but was one was right-handed, the other one is left-handed, and they're signing with different. This Joe Biden is not like he's signing his executive orders with a different hand than what he did. And he's not, you know, he doesn't never written with both hands. So it's confusing, like who you, you're like for me, I'm sitting there. Do you, you know how crazy I felt at that moment? Like you're wanting me to point at this person and he it's not mm. him. Mm. And then I didn't understand, and I don't know if that's because they're gonna do the EVS and everything and, and that these tribunals are going to be um televised or what I don't know if that's it was like to show that there was like for people that aren't awake yet to show that this person was arrested or that a person was arrested. But to me, if I pointed to him, I don't know what they're gonna do to that person sitting there. Like, are they gonna harm that person or is this just like a show? Mm. I know the tribunals weren't a show, but for that particular, Mm. does that make sense? (laughs) It does. Did he look you in the eye? So I don't look them in the eye. Um, I, uh, for me, I don't wanna look at them. So it's just a defense mechanism for me. I saw him, sure. but they said when other people that I had to point to, I just, I looked very quickly pointed and I didn't, I don't engage because they don't have any more power over me. And by having any type of eye contact or anything like that gives them a power over me. And I mm. control that. It's something that I can control. And so I, I mean, if he was looking at me in the eye, I don't, I couldn't answer that question. And how were you feeling at the time when he came in and you sat there and you knew he was in, oh, this version was there? How, how were you, what was going through your mind? You know, I mean, at this point I was so exhausted, just, I mean, I had testified over a hundred times at that point, like, you know, and I, you gotta remember, I'm seeing these videos and pictures and everything, nothing that I haven't looked at this. I, this is the first time I'm seeing this stuff in, so I was trafficked for almost a decade. It's been about 12 years since I've been out. So seeing all of that was traumatizing in itself and triggering. And so when he came out, it was just, that's where I couldn't finish the testimony. We had to go into the next day because I felt confusion, anger. I knew it was almost done. There was like a sigh of relief. There was a lot of emotions that are going through me because I know he's the last one. And it's just like, okay, is this the moment after I'm done testifying that I get my justice? Because I've been called a liar. I've been called hateful. I'm trying to ruin people's lives, all this stuff. But it's like, is this the moment, like, once this is done, will I get justice? I think that was like the main thing. And that's why 
one of the reasons too, when he walked out and he wasn't himself, I couldn't finish my testimony. Cause I'm like, how, I mean, is this done? Like, is this the weight that's going to be lifted? Do I get like, it does that make sense? And I hopefully it makes sense <laughs> mm. from a survivor. You know, you're like this, I just want justice. And I want this to be, I want this to be true. I'm here. I'm seeing it, but I need it to be true. I don't mm. want this to be a show. I need it to be true. If that makes sense. Now, could, could you, military tribunals are different to normal sort of court cases. Was, was everyone there military all in uniforms? Were there any civilians there at all? The only civilians that I saw were my attorney and myself. And then I do have other friends that have testified, but I, you know, they, they mm. were, but they were not in the room. So the only civilians there were us and we were escorted by military. When I went out and flew out there, I was escorted on a military plane. Everything was through the military through the right. U.S. military. From my understanding, they were U.S. military. If they were other, you know, special operations or anything, I couldn't tell you that. I'm sure they wouldn't be able to tell me that. So how did it go? I mean, were you, were you, um, I mean, happy is probably not the word to use, but were you pleased with how the tribunal went? Are, are you feeling that you're going to get some justice? I do think, I know I'm going to get justice. I, I know I'm going to get justice. I believe it. I mean, I've seen certain things. I know that there is someone I'm very up high now who will call me and tell me this is happening. I think that they do that because we, I'm also very vocal about wh what has gone on. And so the threat towards me is extremely high because mm. I like bank accounts have been frozen by George Soros. I mean, these people's accounts, these are, this isn't just like chump change. This is billions of dollars and their livelihood is all frozen because I decided to stand up and say, fuck you. Part yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, I'm going to, I'm going to stand up and say, this isn't okay. Cause if I don't stand up and I don't testify, what if someone else didn't, then they get away with it. Then they get away with mm. their crimes. So, so what exactly what exactly did Joe Biden and George Soros do to you and others? I mean, I can't I, I'm not going to talk about what they did to others when they were with me, because I just don't think that's fair to them. Okay. if They're not speaking out. Um, but as far as me, I mean, I was trafficked. I mean, they raped me. They beat me. They tortured me. I mean, this and again, I was trafficked for almost a decade. So, I mean, I was chained to beds. I was chained to walls. I mean, I was chained to concrete floors you know, they waterboard me. I mean, there was a lot of different things that they did that one person, I, there's certain things I don't even talk about because I don't think that people would even can comprehend that someone can go through that. The fact that I am not, that I'm sitting here in front of you, I should be dead. Like there, there is no reason why I should be sitting here and talking to you in class. Like it, there's just not, that is, that is why I believe in God and a higher being because of everything that happened to me. I'm like, no one can survive that without a higher being, which to me is Jesus. Mm. You know what I mean? To survive it. Now you said that you were trafficked for 10 years. Was there any time period within that 10 year where you tried to make an escape or anything like that? You were recaptured. Did, did anything like that happen at all? No. So when I tell my story, so I had originally got into the porn industry on my own and was getting paid on like getting paid and, and doing it. And then I had freaked out on one of the sets, like just crazy freaked out, like a crazy person. I was like, I can't do this. And so the producer on the set called Derek, who owned me and said, she's like freaking out, like won't do it. Derek got on the phone. He had a list of my friends, my family, everyone I loved and cared about. And it's like, you're going to do this basically threatening them. So I, you know, you have like your porned out makeup, like fake eyelashes, just everything, just porned out makeup. And I'm crying. And I said, the producers are fine. I'll do it. And just get myself together. He said, no, I'm going to film it as a rape scene. So then they filmed it as a gang rape and I got gang raped on camera. And I was like, okay, I know I need help. So I'm going to go get help. So there was a mega church in California and I went to that mega church and I said to the pastor, Mike Erie, I need help. This is what had happened. And, you know, think about it when you're 18, 19, you're a child. I've said this, I said this before, they, they probably hear, heard me say this a million times, <laughs> but you know, you're a child at 18, 19, you're, you don't have any concept, but imagine being that young and gang raped and going to a pastor and say, I was 
getting raped and this is what happened to me he's like I'm gonna help you I'm gonna help you well he ended up giving me to Derek so when you get into the porn industry you have drivers that drive you around because they want to make sure that you show up to your actual um set because a lot of girls are on drugs or drinking or whatever so the Derek's driver sh showed up and then took me to Derek's house. They, Derek said, I now own you. So at that point in time, I never tried to escape from at that point on because I always had someone with me. And it was made very clear that if I tried to, that the people that I loved and cared about, even people that I didn't even really love and care about, that they were threatening. I just was like, I have to stay here because I don't even think it's going to be me that's hurt. It's going to be them that's hurt. So, and you also get into that Stockholm syndrome where you don't think about leaving because you're under that Stockholm. That's just Umbrella. your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Mm. So, I mean, the, the, the phrase human trafficking, it's a, it's a, a very broad spectrum. Mm -hmm. It's multifaceted. So, I mean, this is a question to both you and Claire, because Claire, you're fighting it this side of the pond and your expertise is, is the, the corporate, yes? My expertise, got, I got into this because I started pulling people off the streets and realised there was a lot going on with paedophilia and trafficking and stuff and people being used, like kids in homes being used from Wednesday till Sunday, they'd be um, smacked off the head on gear and then they'd be brought back Monday, so they were classed as temporary missing from these care homes. So, in other words, yeah. they're being trafficked. And how they were getting away with it was, let's say, there was two or three of them in the care home. They would be blackmailed by someone in the care home that's saying, well, if you two go into it, but we'll keep the little brother out. Mm -hmm. So he's safe. So these kids were going along with it because they had no choice. So I got through with all that shit and then realised what's going on. And then I'm quite good at um, understanding warfare. I know it sounds crazy, but how to cut someone off at the knees when you feel the easiest way to do it. Cut the head of the beast off. So I started researching and I did a lot of research which brought me to the attention of the fact that everything to do with the trafficking is surrounded by all the government. It, it, all, it all, all roads lead to the top. Forget Rome, it all leads to the top. Everything does. There's always somebody in the top of our government that's involved with all the trafficking and to do with all the paedophilia. And that's mm -hmm. how they all, that's, that's a percentage of them. Not all of them, but it's a percentage of them. But um, Basically, if, if, I, if I can tell you the biggest spectrum of what goes on in the world, then you might just get a concept because it's a bit like Monopoly, but a, but a very vile version of it. OK, so it's like this. They look at you've got the, the superpowers and they look at a country and then decide which country they can pick on. This. So, for instance, because if there's some countries on their asses financially, they'll cause a war using religion or something else. Or it could be germ warfare like they did with the with AIDS, which was obviously planned. Yeah. Um, in, in Africa, well, that was because it was mineral rights they were after. So, as an example, a war will be caused, and through the war, they get ammunition sold, um, mineral rights they usually grab, or something like that, arms deals, they do all these things and everything. And what's behind it is then they can ship arms, drugs, trafficking, children, everything. Everything's worth money to them, it's a commodity, people, everything's human commodity. It's the same all over. So, that is basically where, where we're at, which is the area I've gone down. I've been researching people that have worked in Parliament. I've researched um, individual lawyers in London, for example. More money, trafficking money, comes through the London Mile than any other country in the world. That's it. Mm. End of. We are the biggest fucking perpetrators of human trafficking. And when I say that, I mean, you know, adrenochrome is one thing, but forget that. There's organ harvesting that's going on. I mean, we're talking about children from a certain age that are worth a value of money and they will literally use these kids until their life starts to diminish in other words they're going to die so they'll have them rape 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 and these are kids as well and then when they know the light's going to fade they'll go to another place and then they'll just they'll just die on a bench not not be put to sleep they'll die on a bench and at that point or sometimes they'll do it while they're awake and they just uh, when they go into a coma because they're dying from internal bleeding, they'll just cut their organs out of them. That's it. End of. Wow. They literally it's, use it like where it's um, an abattoir, like mm. animals. So as an example, if anybody's out there that doesn't agree with eating meat and knows what goes on in the abattoirs, that's what's happening with children, and it's happening in our country. Wow. Because I was, I was going to say to you, um, you know, human trafficking, 
it's a broad spectrum and the sex part of it is just one part we've got organ trafficking yeah the adrenochrome and all of that so Madison, as an example mark i'll just give you an example let's say we had a child that went missing and this child that it's worth 30 40 50 000 pounds yeah oh could be more depending on the age they'll they'll use that child for a lot of sex because if you imagine if you're going to sell drugs you've only got one hit on drugs haven't you? you've only got one hit on arms and ammunition but you've got many hits on being able to use the child for sex and everything constantly through a ring like in parliament which is the one we we're investigating so a paedophile mm -hmm. ring which is there that's involved with banking people it's involved so in other words the people that are in parliament certain ones are using the same bankers that are in the paedophile ring because they get good rates and they get to lend it so they're all in this private club and how they get away with it is they're all in a platonic paedophile ring that they video each other doing it so that that way once they're in the club no one will know about it and that, that's mm -hmm. your entry your entry is paedophilia yeah. probably sometimes satanic abuse where they literally cut the kids throats and stuff but from there it means you're in it it's a silent agreement mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there they are they're away with that and that is the way it works and it's all to do with um well you might not agree with this or not but not everybody in this country or this world believes in goodness and light. There's a lot of people that believe in Satan out there and satanic cults. And if anyone is standing here now and says, oh, none of this shit exists. Well, I'm fucking telling you, I've seen many, many cases of babies being cut, the throats cut, the hung up, cut, they drain the blood, they use the blood, right? They drink the blood, everybody does. And not only that, then they use the, the meat of the child and they cook with it for something that they all use. So that's their way of saying they're honoring the child. Wow. It's sick. It's just sick. So, I mean, this leads to the southern border. I mean, Trump secured that southern border. And now with Biden, or this version of Biden being in, he's opened it up and it's hemorrhaging well, people. Well, wait, he, he, Trump started building the wall. The wall, Biden stopped the built building of the wall. And if you look at the borders in America and Canada and everything, Canada has a wall, right? For Americans not to get in. Why are we not having a wall? The, the wall had nothing to do about people coming in and seeking asylum because you can come in and seek asylum, but the, there's a very small percentage that come into America that are seeking asylum. It's usually trafficking, drugs, or the cartel who's bringing them in. So Biden stopped the wall being built. So half of it's built, but the, he stopped it. So now that's where the borders are open and people are just like flooding in because they're paying mm. the coyotes to come in and paying their cartel tax to the coyote to get in. Cause you have to pay the tax to get in. It doesn't matter who you are, trafficker, guns, drugs, whatever. They're gonna, mm. you know. So it's, it's just, it's crazy. You see, that boils down to what I said, Mark, which everybody needs to have transparent bank accounts. It doesn't matter what position of power you're in, everything yes. has to be completely transparent. Because if we go to, to um, the gold and silverback currency and everything's transparent, it means nobody can do any laundry because there's not going to be dark web. If Starlink takes place, which is going to get rid of all the other systems yes. Yes. With, with Elon, it means then there's none of this shit because no, none of these fuckers will be able to hide anything anymore there can't be any dark web and there's going to be no money to be in. I would like to say, sorry, I know this is, I'm going a bit off, off tack here, but I just want to say, I know we mentioned this the other day on our video, but I just want, for people that haven't watched that, Mark, you know, one of the things that, that a lot of people in Britain are not understanding is why is Biden not Biden? And why are people still allowing Biden to shut down policies on the border and stuff like that? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. So let me explain I mean, that, that's a whole podcast in itself, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I can tell you the short version of it. Please do. So we are, there's the United States of America, which turned us into a corporation. We are not, every American got put into this contract when we were born into the social security when they turned us into a corporation we are sovereign americans we are free americans that's why we fought a war so we're free americans joe biden or the fake joe biden which really okay it's not joe biden that's signing all this stuff it is the the fake pelosi and obama and all of the, these these are the people that are, are, are running it right of the bankrupt corporation trump 
is the 19th president right now. It's not been said. Yes. People can say I'm crazy and a conspiracy theorist. I don't care. But he also wrote the second declaration of independence. It's out there. It talks about in there the human trafficking, how they use the money for human trafficking and drugs, because the human trafficking right now, it's modern day slavery. Like that's where mm -hmm. we need to really come across this modern day slavery. And so that Joe Biden, these people don't, do you think that Trump is really gonna trust everyone in the military? No, he's not. So these people think that this person is in power. They are, have been in their, whatever, for whatever reason, he is mm -hmm. the president of the corporation. So they are obeying the orders of the person of the corporation because that's who they are serving the military. The, I believe that there is a whole separate military that's the American military that Trump trusts and is under. So I think that there's two, two ent entities right now is mm -hmm. the Trump military, this military that is obeying the Biden orders. And that's where people are confused, but then we're all awake, right? Like people over here say the word woke. I'm like, woke, wokeism is the new racism. Cause you don't know what woke yeah. is. Because if you are not awake of what's going on and go see what's going on at the borders, what's going on in Europe, what's going on mm -hmm. with the trafficking, what's going on with different things. And that modern day slavery is the biggest epidemic pandemic that we have at this point in time in mm -hmm. history, because mm -hmm. of just like Claire said of People like Joe Biden, George Soros, Bill Gates, all of these people, like they, and there's distractions everywhere. Oh, Bill Gates getting divorced. No, that's a distraction because it's all science. Yes. All science. Yeah, exactly. It's smoke and mirrors. That's what yeah, it is. It's just like, with all due respect, it's all about a Prince William this day. All that said, bollocks. Science. Yeah. Oh, my grandma's upset. Cop, she's the toughest old bastard ever. <laughs> well, look and look at your prince. I call him your prince because he's not our prince. The one with Meghan Markle and coming in and talking to Oprah and, and whatever. Uh. It's a distraction. No one cares. You're this is America. Get the hell out. We don't want you here. We don't want your state. You left yeah, there because you're running. It's the same old tricks from the same old dog. And you know what? It's like, come on, we played that one long enough now. Everyone's waking up. So you know, it's not happening mm -hmm. anymore, is it? So, so let's talk about the, the southern border, because you had an incident there, um, which mm -hmm. is particularly harrowing. Could you talk a little bit about that, please, and how you got the intel to, to go there? Sure. I, so I can't say how I got the intel, just um, because that messes up our other stuff that we have going yeah, on. But sure. we get the intel to go. So usually when we go to the borders, we have... Um, teams with us, marshals and federal agents that go in with us because they are trained to do all that. And that's kind of something that I had said when Claire and I were speaking, but they're trained to it. I am combat trained. I am gun trained, but I've only done that. I've only been doing that for a year and a half, not for years. I mean, I'm in freaking law school. Right? I'm not like this person, but we were told that the fake president well, they said from the top, they didn't say Joe Biden, but they said from the top that they cannot go in with us on this rescue. It was supposed to be a 48 hour operation for us to go in. And then it was like, they're not going in with us, which means that most likely someone has tipped off the tipped off the traffickers. So we have to go in and we have to get the kids. So we went in and I'm like, well, I told my team, listen, I'm not forcing anyone to go in, but I'm going in. If I go in by myself, I'm going in, I'm going in guns blazing and I'm going to go get those kids. But, How big was the team originally? Sorry. How big was the team originally? Well, so I kind of yelled at for um, staying the numbers or whatever, but my team is 12. And then usually you have like multiple, I mean. There was eight on one and nine on the other. Yeah, right. But the thing is, is I cannot, um, yeah. I just had a meeting with my team and we can't say these numbers. Yeah, but percentage numbers. wise, um, you were cut by a, a large percentage and you had to go in there more or less alone. Yes, we, yeah. I mean, we went in, we were cut it by like 70%. Like you, were, you were winning and then all of a sudden you had nothing. It was like the Dominion machine literally taking you up the way. Exactly. <laughs> just, I just like the point I mean it's really if that's exactly what it is is you took our numbers away and then it's crazy because I've had a lot of time to think about this I talked to my team yesterday because we had to go through like the report and everything and so you know talking to them I'm like you know they're they want us to go in and and get hurt because if we're hurt then then we're not taking their supply away 
because their, their supply has is starting to run low. Like, and so us going in, it's like, let's, let's put you in a dangerous situation because then if something happens to you or anyone on, on your team, and it's crazy because I know other people that do extractions and I'm like, this is the second time that I've gotten hurt in an, in an extraction, like where I'm right. physically in an altercation with someone, which is not a normal thing, but normally you have a team, a, a huge team around you mm -hmm. and that are federally trained and that have been, have trained to do rescues and extractions for human trafficking. So if you can talk us through it as much as you can, what happened? So we were told that they explicitly could not go in with us. A couple said that they were, um, who were agents. And they said, we're going to go, we're going to go in. They said, fuck it. We're going in. We're like going to protect you. There's no way we're going to let you go in my team. Like I said, I told them you don't have to go in, but they were like, no, we're going in. And so because it was supposed to be a 48 hour operation, we decided we're going to go in, we're going quick and we have to go in basically blindly for us but they also don't know we're coming either because they we don't know if they were tipped off at this point that we're coming in yes. so we do go in and um i'm not gonna get emotional here as i've cried enough <laughs> um i laugh because i don't want to cry so we we go in and there are children there i mean there's over 27 children some are dead on arrival um and some like there, like there's so much going on around me at this point that there's like another little kid that's sitting there. I know something's wrong. He's like gasping for air. He's like not breathing. It's like, he's like that. I don't know how to explain it. It was like a little kid. So, you know, I do all the training that you learn when you have a kid, like, you know, what you need to do. And, you know, I knew at that point that he was not going to make it. I don't know if that was just God telling me to love him and love on him. But like, so he knows that there's a pure love that he's going to go somewhere. He's going to go somewhere good because he just, I don't know how long he was in this um, trafficking, you know? So I don't know how much torture and how much abuse or how much rape had happened to this little boy. Um, Claire and I named him Angel because it's just like, to me, he's an angel, right? He, he endured horrific, horrific, just Horrific, right? And so we all say you talked to Monty about going to, to, to was the wonderful place where he was going to be with the angels, don't you? And that right. he's in a perfect place that he's going to. And so there like, any yeah. pain. Right. that's what you're saying to him. You, you, yeah. You're fine. Well, it's like I kept telling him, you know, you're going to go, you're going to go to heaven. It's beautiful there. I mean, Jesus is there. I was explaining to what I believe what heaven would look like for him. And I honestly believe that God's powerful enough to, to give this child what I described to him. So this child knows that heaven is good and heaven is, I mean, I know it's his soul, but I mean, when he was in there and his limp body, I mean, I, I've never had anyone die in my house. Like, yeah, time. I know. You haven't ever had, it's not a nice thing to happen with anyone. I mean, I, I know when I've lost people and I've had somebody die with me. So, uh, and that was an adult. But what I'm saying is, um, it's not nice for anybody to go through that, Mark. And you would know that as well. None of us do, because especially when it's a child, because not only you relate it to your own children, but you just relate it to pure innocence. It's just innocence, isn't it? And it's what God intended children to be pure and innocent and have a life and have a childhood and all the things that we all strive for for our own kids. And then this poor little mite never got that chance. And and mm -hmm. the only thing I can say, and I'll, I'll still say this, are you all right, Mads? Yeah, I'm good. You're, I'm good. Yeah, you're ready to talk. The only thing we agreed with, at least his mum knows, when you find her, that you another woman, another mother was with the, her little boy till the end. And that's better than being on his own. Right, isn't it? Right. Well, that's why I, I, I don't. Like um, I mean, this is a question I don't like to ask, but d did he talk to you at all? He didn't. He just kept looking at me and his eyes. You know, when I tell my story or when I've talked out, I always say, look at someone's eyes because you'll know within their soul what their eyes look like. And his eyes were just <sighs> glazed. No. They were just really? tired. They were just tired. Like, I mean, like his life tired. is gone. Like he yeah. just, like he just had given. Like he's just like I. I don't have another second to fight because I don't know who or what you are coming in. Like I just can't fight anymore. So let me, like, let me let go. You know. And to me, it's so like, he knew. 
Yeah. He knew. Yeah. He, I do think that he knew that I was good because he was the same age around, you know, my youngest. And I just, you know, was hugging him. I sing to my kids every night. You are my sunshine. And I was saying to him, I think, I believe I told him I loved him. I just, but I, but to me, I'm like, it's hard for me now because did these people tell that child that because they're sick? and fucked up in the head like did, did you tell them you love him does he know what love is did, did he know what love w- was the pure love w- what was before all of this happened so that's where it's just a, it's just such a difficult situation and you know I've gotten yelled at a lot from people that really love me and care about me and they're like you're going into these battles why but no one else is doing it look mm-hmm. at those agents you took an oath to to serve and protect and you left us there on the battlefield. And so- the thing, is, the thing is, Maths, and I keep thinking about this and what's going to be coming is not good for all these people yeah. because they've chose their line now, what they've yeah. done. You can't repent from that. No. Mm. There's nothing you can do. Not when it's to do with God's children. I'm sorry. And everybody might look at this and think I'm talking crazy shit. No, I'm not. No, There's you're not. There's going to be people now who mm. will not come back from this. Right. Let's hope so. So, Madison, this uh, this would have been happening inside, yes? And I'm presuming there's a lot of noise happening around you as well because right. your team was taking care of business. Right. Um, then what happened? Did you just take the little boy out or did you leave him to assist the agents? No, I held him. They had a, everyone under arrest at that point. I couldn't leave him. I was sitting there for a while and they're like, you have to get up. We, I, we can't move them because original, like people do have to come in and see the scene. And so, because people weren't coming in with us, we needed to make sure that everything was preserved, all evidence. So when they do go to court, that none of us had altered anything. So- Right, forensically, I, you would not be compromised. Right, so if I would have moved him, it would have been a, a messing with evidence or, or what, however you wanna call it so you know I held him and then you know I I wanted to give him a kiss on the head but they were like you can't because it'll like your saliva like you you know and so I mean again I have my team that's protecting me too right to make sure that I'm okay and fine and so Mm. uh, I just left him there you know but I I do I do know where he is now where they moved him to we are trying to find it, it, where he was taken from and I mean I told Claire if we can't find anyone I myself will pay for a funeral I will give him a funeral I don't I'm just praying that if he has loved ones out there that we will find them because I know we will because they deserve that closure in their life too hmm. so know? what about the other perpetrators because it must have been hard going in there being armed seeing that insanity that hell and just not taking them all out you know, it is hard. I mean, you got to remember too, I am a trafficking survivor. So me seeing this, I'm also was abused by my dad when I was young. And so this is hard for me in that sense, because I see the abuse that's going on. So thankfully, if I didn't have forgiveness, I don't think I could go in there and not shoot the hell out of all of them, really, and or do unimaginable things to them. It is very difficult. But you can't, I mean, we, I also want justice for these kids. I want them to grow up and be like, this team went in, they saved us, they brought us back home, or they gave us some type of life and that their traffickers are rotting away because in America, any pedophile or trafficker, you get, you're get you probably either dying in prison or you're getting raped and tortured every single day in prison. Yeah. Because they, you could be a murderer, you can be whatever, and you won't get messed with, but in prison here, the pedophiles and the human traffickers. Mm. So it is- it They is have their own code, don't they? They do in the UK. There's, like a, code, there's a code yeah. of honor to be. Oh, yeah. Amongst, um, yeah. They won't don't agree with women and children. Women and children, yeah. or any rape like that, they don't like it. No. Totally yeah. anti it. Yeah. Do you know one thing that I cannot stand, and it's a pet gripe with me, is I can't stand injustice. And when I look at the hate, that Donald Trump has had, and he has been spearheading this this fight against trafficking, and he saved yes. thousands and thousands of I'm not just going to say children, but people, and the vast majority of people have got no idea, and they believe the mainstream media, and they hate this man, and he's doing amazing work. How does that make you feel? 
I mean, I love Trump. You know what I mean? I'm gonna tell you a funny story. When Trump got elected the first time, I was like, so pissed off. <laughs> I was like, no way. And then I started to do my own research. I'm like, everything this man said he was gonna do, he's doing in policy and everything because i am a patriot i do follow government people have asked me to run for office here which i'm like no i'm in law school i need to know the law so i can use it against them because that's what they've done to us and so i i follow politics very closely and so i started following him and i'm like i'm gonna see what he he does you know because here in america he was he had this show the um apprentice show you know like he was just this guy this guy you know whatever so i was like Really, we put some actor in the White House. Like, this is so stupid. Then I started following him. And then what he started to talk about human trafficking, modern day slavery. And I was like, he, this is the only president in my lifetime. And I think probably even ever that spoke about modern day slavery, maybe since Lincoln, right? Because Lincoln's freed the slaves. So talking about actually slavery was Donald Trump and said, we want to elevate every survivor's voice we want to free everyone and elevate every survivor's voice i mean this man like i don't care if you don't like what he says i don't care if you don't like his mean tweets or whatever he did do what he was gonna said he was gonna do and god can use anyone and you don't have to be perfect because look at me look at claire look at you none of us here are perfect that god used were the ones that they were they said were a liar i mean they or as a prostitute or whatever Those are the people that changed history. And Mm -hmm. so to me, I'm going to stand up. You all are standing up and we're like, you know what? I don't need to be perfect because I don't want the perfect person to change history because those are the people that are probably either one in their basement, like uh, sleepy Joe Biden doing really horrible things where people don't know. Cause our, I, I, it's funny. Our sin is out there. Our stuff is out there. Our horrible stuff is out there. And we're like, yeah, I did it. I own it. Like, yeah. The people that are like, no, 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 I didn't do this. You're not going to change history. And so, so Donald Trump, to me, it just, it's, I don't even know how to describe it because as a survivor and being like trafficked by these people and trafficked by the elite and trafficked by them, it's, I I don't know how to describe it because I got shut down. So I, I wrote a book about being trafficked when in 2014 when i wrote my book i got shut down so hard and i was scared because people were threatening me then god said to me you need to start speaking out and you need to start naming names because that's the only way that people are going to wake up and things are going to change but i did tell you it's not an easy road it's just like donald trump says it is a lonely road you're walking it is a very very lonely road but if if not us here right now because you guys are not here in america but you're patriots if not us patriots, 100%. if not people that love our country, mm. then, then what? We're we're all dead. It's got to be Mark, isn't it? Because if you think about it, we, you know, we haven't got the white hats here for a good long time. You know, there's mm. only been long and not like it is now, it's, there's more. But, you know, you were mm. really running the gauntlet when you were sticking your neck out three years ago here yeah. because there's no one there to protect you. There's no firewall. Mm. But because we love it, we love the, we, as we love the country. Yeah, and we, yeah. That, you are our family, aren't you? So we all stick together when the shit hits the fan. We pull together. Definitely. Right. I've just got two more questions. And the first, it's gonna, the, the first one's going to be to you, Madison, and the second one's going to be to you both. But can you shed any light on the Hollywood pedophilia? So I was, tra- I mean, I was in the porn industry. I was in Hollywood. So I was trafficked. I was lived in Hollywood. I lived in the hills. That's where um, Derek's mansions were. So I was trafficked by um, the elite of Hollywood. Now I'm going to drop a name here that I have not dropped. I'm going to drop it here. Um, so, you know, I talk about Tom Hanks a lot. My first interaction with him was him punching me in the face. I knew who Tom Hanks was when I was a little girl. Now, when you asked me, like, did I ever think about getting out? There were times where I thought, oh, I know who this person is. They're going to help me. And then that slowly, like, went away after time. And I realized that they're buying, buying me to do horrific things. So Tom Hanks is one of them. Jeremy Piven is another one um, who was on Entourage and, and everything else, which that's what people tell me. I don't know what that show is, but because I don't no, watch no. a lot of TV, but um, Jeremy Piven, you know, like I said, these politicians, there was the, um, oh God, what, what are they called here? The, it's like the main, the main police person, like the, I'm having a blonde moment, the chief of police, basically. 
Chiva, please. Yeah. Another one who I'm like, I have not talked about, but Matthew McConaughey. And I'm like, it makes me sick because really? he wants to, <laughs> it makes me sick because he wants to run for office. And I'm like, this is what's going on is the people that haven't been arrested and that don't know what's going on. They're trying to put those people in office because then they can still try to control the local government that is within the each state. So it's like, let's put these people in local government, whatever. You know, they say Caitlyn Jenner is a Trump supporter, but Caitlyn Jenner is fucked up because I'm sure he, she, whatever, saw everything that happened. And it, 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 you either go get major help from therapists like I have and be like, I need help to live a normal civilian life. Or you become on that opposite end of like Caitlyn Jenner, who's wanting to run for office here and Matthew McConaughey and, and all of them. So, I mean, there's a lot of, it's hard for me to speak out because the, Hollywood is so big. If they are a major celebrity, they most likely are involved. Now I'm not saying all of them are because I do believe that there are some very good ones. I think some of them are cracking. I think that they haven't spoken out but knew about it. I think like Brad Pitt, they're making him to look crazy. He's not, he's just done and he's trying to protect his kids because now he has kids. He didn't protect those other kids but now he has kids. So he's like, I'm gonna speak out. And now what have they done? They made him look like he's crazy. Kanye West, you're married to the biggest pedophile nasty piece of shit kim kardashian now you have kids now they're saying he's crazy so like that's where people need to start looking in and really looking at if they're saying that they're crazy most likely they're they've either turned them into a white hat or they're fighting a good fight because they just know that this isn't right and morally if you have any moral compass can i ask a question because yeah. i heard something that i'm just gonna ask you uh, you know, um, what Tom, not Tom Hunt, who did you just mention at the end of the Matthew episode? McConaughey, Jeremy Piven, uh, Matthew McConaughey. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt, you said his, miss, his ex misses. Angelina Jolie. Yeah, because I heard yesterday that Gwyneth Paltrow, Gwyneth Paltrow, her, and Oprah are three of the four main satanic witches. Oh, I believe it. I, I, I totally it's believe it. that run the country, that run the north, south, east, and west. But that's exactly, okay, do you, do you remember when Angelina, well, I don't know if you remember, but Angelina Jolie w kept traveling overseas to adopt babies? Yeah, I know about that, yeah. What were you doing over there? Oprah Winfrey, Winfrey too, her orphanage, all those children just mysteriously vanished. No investigation into it. No one's found those children. No one's talked about those children. And so... Hollywood, I do believe, I know that God has told me there are two things that are, I, I have a reoccurring dream and you, people can think I'm crazy or whatever, but I believe in the gift of prophecy, two recurring dreams, the Hollywood sign. So in LA, well, you've been to LA, Mark, so, you know, you've been to LA. Have you been to LA? No, I tried to keep away from the Satan, so I'm going to be honest. <laughs> good, good call. Um, we split burns. So there's a hot. There's a huge Hollywood sign that says Hollywood and you can go up and walk to whatever. I've had a dream that, that it is burning and then the city is burning behind me. I do believe that Hollywood is going to fall. Um, there's also um, the mega churches. So I've been speaking out against mega churches. I just dropped names. Uh, I, and I don't know if you guys have heard these because they're mega churches here, but there's a guy named Rick Warren who has books. There's a guy named that Greg Glory. They are huge mega church pastors. And I believe that those churches are going to burn as well. And I feel like people like Claire and I feel like people that are, are getting spiritual, those are going to be people that rise up because we're not, we don't get paid for what we're doing. We take out our own time and we go and we like do the rescues and we go and do like whatever. We're not getting paid for this. We're talking and like, you know, even Mark, you're taking your time. Like we're not getting paid for this. We're just saying we're going to be the real news because we're sick of the lamestream media. And yeah. Can I just make a point though. We're not getting paid. For this. One thing we all started this for, we might not have known it at the time. I didn't know it. I've always been spiritual. I know that you have, you have, more faith than me because of what you've been through yeah. but we really have all done this for the greater purpose of god now which is humanity exactly because so we're bringing them back up aren't we we're bringing humanity back up off its knees yeah so my final my final question to both of you and i'll ask you first claire <laughs> is this still a massive problem are we clearing are we cleaning it up we 
you are cleaning it and believe it or not all these people that i get on my channel going oh i can't see anything yet what's happening there's a spiritual war going on okay so without sounding too gaga when president trump speaks about the the um war that's going on invisible war okay he's not talking about the vaccine war or anything, and he's not talking about COVID. He's talking about the spiritual war that's going on, and it is good v evil, okay, across our planet. Yeah, and it's really what's been going on. And because he's been fighting against um, the tide, because there's such a lot of satanic, dark, demonic human beings out there that are using us like we're just cattle. We he's used the people. And whatever you want to call it, we have all come on board. And there was a few, then there was many. And now we're up to probably, I'd say we're up to 69% of the population now are awake. So, yeah, the fuck. Yeah, I, when I we're taking back and we're, we're giving God back his land. <laughs> no, but it, it's Jesus's land. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Trump's just getting it for Jesus. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm going to say, I'm going to say this, you know, as a, your last question. Yes, it is still a huge issue because there's always going to be evil in the world. And so it is a huge issue and we need to know and never fall asleep because modern day slavery is a huge issue. And this is this and again for another show or whatever, but CPS, Child Protective Services there and here, you know, there are a lot of things that need to fall. The Planned Parenthood here, I don't know if you guys have that in the UK, like that needs to fall. That's already on the agenda. Wait, right. So, but I'm going to tell you this, this is what's going on. And this is what everyone needs to realize. There are two, two things that you can serve here. There are two kingdoms that we all have a choice from. There is a kingdom of good and there is a kingdom of evil and there is no serving both masters. So you serve the good or you serve the evil. There is no in between line. So everyone needs to pick their kingdom and then let's go to war because it is good. And it is evil. Like, like Claire said, it's good versus evil. And so you cannot serve the two masters as one. So whatever you choose, you make that choice now because it is a kingdom of evil and a kingdom of good. And it is here on the earth. And it is time for us to wake up. It is time for us to rise up. It is time for us to be the motherfucking resistance. For good. Well, we are. Yeah. We? And the thing is, we've yeah. got resistance behind us. We've got military guys that have come out the scenes, Mark. Well, they've come to me and you know that, don't they? And they've had private meetings with me and said, we will we'll go against, we, we're coming up with this cause. This is not military, but uh, let's say they're, they're independent people that work for themselves. So um, they get yeah. special ops for governments when shit needs to get sorted out. And they've yeah. come to me and the shit yeah. needs Because, you know, just kind of what these guys work for and what cause they go behind the scenes and do when it comes to children. They don't like yeah. it. No. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, listen, we'll, we'll do this again when there's uh, more, more intel, there's more updates. We'll, we'll do another three way. That'd be great. But thank you so much, Madison, for that. I really appreciate I it. You can't say that in America. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Well, thank you very much for all of that. And uh, let's speak soon. Yeah.